We are live. We are it's not memorized. Yeah. Well, what a nightmare. Yeah, for some of just for for those that watch us, you know, every single week, um, which is your three, mom. Yeah. Oh, and and Sean's mom. <laughs> uh, She's dead, but I hear they got good reception yeah. beyond the grave. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. To, your, our moms are watching together. Then, um, hey, the yeah the the, uh, the the drama that's been going on with trying to live stream to get teams working and with OBS and the nightmare that that all was. I finally this weekend in one experiment, I deleted OBS entirely and I went and installed the Streamlabs OBS uh, version. I was o already using the virtual cam and I just thought, why not use the version that I don't have to go install an add-on to make something work. I'll just uh, play with that. And it worked immediately, first try. The clouds part of the to. God rays came down and <laughs> angelic choirs. Um, so that's nice, but there are some, hey, there's some always some caveats. And like I was just saying, instead of it streaming directly to my personal feed, it can only go to pages uh, and the, with the setup that I have, and I'll, I'll continue to play with it. So I had to go find it and rename it and then do a watch party over on the Office 365 community page. But now we are live, so we can take your questions. But and gentlemen, you, good morning, officially. Are the beneficiary of all that effort. Yeah. Good morning, Christian. How yes. is it there in sunny Utah? Uh, it was beautiful for walking the dogs this morning. I got up just before six, and it was already bright. Of course, the sun hadn't cleared the mountains, but it was already a bit warm. I don't think we're going to be Hal's 105 anywhere close to that. Um. But we, because we have uh, where we are, I mean, it's just between the two valleys or the top of Utah Valley. And if you've never been here, I mean, this way the, the wind comes through at the, you know, the the, the bottom of the, of the Salt Lake Valley, the top of the Utah Valley, and this, the clouds roll in. And so it could be, you know, 100 degrees and then suddenly start raining. And as yeah, I was you described the, it before, telling the guys, like my first experience back in the 80s in the college going camping in the Uintas. I was used to going camping like in the Sierra Nevadas. I grew up in Northern California and we camp in the foothills and go up into the mountains. And in August, you have no fear of any moisture from the air. <laughs> there's, there's zero danger. Um, and it snowed on us and hailed on us uh, in August here in Utah. And so the mountains are unpredictable. Um, so it, uh, it, it makes it interesting. Not a lot of swimming pools that are uh, personal swimming pools here. I so. imagine they become just holes in the ground. Yeah. So it's supposed to be a high of 75, 0% humidity here in Cincinnati today. We don't get a whole lot of days like that, and we haven't recently. But the last few, uh, few consecutive days have been nice. We've had uh, people out uh, over, and we've been on the back patio socially distancing while we socialize and uh, my wife strung up some christmas lights and created a nice little environment back there right behind our house is a green space um so you hear all sorts of wildlife and what's going on and it's really kind of nice nice and hal is just in the bunker waiting for it to be freakishly hot <laughs> That's already done that. Yeah, I just say that so, you know, Hal, yeah, when, when I tell when we tell Hal to Actually, stay safe, I, I really... <laughs> your walls are melting. <laughs> it's di it's different. <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> yeah. no, we've already had one day over hundred at that hundred and nine, and, and what's really freakish about it is is that the last two days it has clouded up and rained in the afternoon. Arizona is uh, in the in May through June is the typical convection oven. It's well over 100 degrees, and uh, the humidity sits between 5 and 10 percent. Starting about uh, the 4th of July, right in about that, the first week, um, we get a monsoon flow up off of the Gulf of uh, California, and uh, then we have monsoon weather where it's oh, 30, 40 percent. Humidity all of the time, and we get we get rainstorms, big ugly thunderstorms every afternoon. That's and, crazy. Uh, so, so the fact that we had two of those days, the last, let's see, it was Friday and Sat no Saturday and Sunday. Were there there about 
a month and a half early. Mm. So uh, it's the f- I've never seen that here. It's freakish weather. With our changing uh, global weather patterns and just general climate, I'm not surprised. I suspect Arizona and many of the hot areas are going to get even hotter um, during summer months and whatnot. Yeah, sadly, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I wonder at what point we uh, declare that it's an area is just too hot to inhabit. I don't think that'll happen anytime soon. But, you know, you look at some of the temperatures that happen down there in um, Arizona and in Vegas, places like that, you know, 113. And you could be walking out on the strip. It doesn't feel exactly like that because the moisture just immediately evaporates as it comes to the surface of your skin. But um, anytime I've gotten to a hotel, it's like brushing all this salt off. <laughs> it's like, what happened? And why am I so thirsty? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, let's, uh, if you guys have uh, any questions that you've run into over the last uh, few days that you want to kick things off with, Mike is going to be uh, dialing in here. So here in a second. Mike Nelson? Yes. Oh, ah, cool. No, I was just looking at... Um, the uh, Office 365 community and one of the new posts by Georgie saying he signed into his account. When he tries to open Outlook Web, it shows an error. At the same time, he's successfully added this account to his smartphone. He has Office 365 E1, Teams Web, and Desktop, and other apps are working perfectly. Um, I looked at your screenshot, Georgie, and that is indicative if you were to open up uh, your browser tools like f12 and look what's happening on the network tab my suspicion is you're caught in a loop uh, a redirection loop that commonly occurs with uh, claims authentication so i would look to your system to see if you have any active proxies um Make sure everything that needs to be whitelisted for Office 365, because uh, if I understood correctly from your message, your mobile device is working fine. It's just your desktop. And so that's going to be device specific. So check your proxies, check your whitelists. Make sure you don't have something like a Fiddler proxy enabled in the background. Fiddler sets itself up as a transparent proxy. Uh, for those who haven't used it, Fiddler is kind of a web diagnostics tool. Many of those tools, like uh, Fiddler and Postman, uh, set themselves up as transparent proxies so they can look at your HTTPS stream. Uh, and when they're looking at that HTTPS stream, the only way they can do that is by effectively conducting a man in the middle attack on your system where they terminate the SSL tunnel, look at the encrypted packets, and then re-encrypt them and send them to their destination. And when that happens, sometimes you get into these weird redirect loops. If you see a lot of 302s, you know, those are redirects, HTTP 302s, and a good sign that something like this is happening. So check that out. Um, I'll try to also post that as a response in the news group here or in the Facebook group. So that's that's the end of my first diatribe. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. No, I not I'm not celebrating the end as far as <laughs> um, It's okay if you are. <laughs> uh, just and, and Mike, welcome. Hey Mike. Hey guys, how, how, how you doing? doing? Pretty good. How hey. are you holding up? You know, it's uh it's moving right along with uh first we got the pandemic and now we've got all this other crazy stuff going on. It just yeah. It's getting exhausting, <laughs> is what it is. Life in general is exhausting. I've got a shirt that says uh, 20, 2020 written by Stephen King. Yeah. I had an extra one. I gave it to my wife. So, uh, yeah, it's. I've had seems... a couple people ask about that $6 t shirt that I had of the uh, the dumpster fire that said 2020 on it that I wore. Yeah. It's back. Yeah. Good... Oh, and today's t shirt. I've seen that one before. <laughs> when you're feeling antisocial. Yeah. Well, this Not one really. I shared it earlier too. For those that are uh, Reservoir Dog uh, and or Lord of the Rings fans. That's Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. 
with the <laughs> all the bad guys from Lord of the Rings. So yeah, love that. So which of them lost their ear? Oh no, that was the cop who lost his ear. So uh, that is, we've we've got a few folks that are watching the live stream. If you have any questions you'd like us to tackle, then feel free to to ask right now. At least right now, you got four MVPs on here with different backgrounds, and we're happy to to take on any questions. I'm kind of streaming through, uh, going through the last few days of questions to see if there's anything that we're missing. Uh, Uh, oh, here, here's a question. So it's a team's question. Um, is it uh, Nini who's asking this? So I'm adding docs into files to a planner in the same team. When adding, I get the question, add from Teams or SharePoint? Does anyone know the difference? Ultimately, there's not a difference. I mean, because... Yeah. Team storage is backed by yeah, SharePoint, SharePoint. So, so I guess it's just your yeah, how, the how file you choose to add it, SharePoint. how you choose uh, to add it, or how you access it. I think it's more of a an accessibility thing, uh, making it easier for people to use uh, the systems and links they're familiar with. But from a technical standpoint, the implementation on the back end is the same. They both come out of SharePoint. So yeah, it's kind of odd though that it would ask for that you know difference. Um, you yeah. know, for people that are working inside teams, um, especially just the rush of people that are you know using teams for the first time, they don't have a lot of experience with moving files from SharePoint. Probably more relevant would be, do you want to move it from OneDrive or local? They'd be more familiar with. Yeah, um, and even with OneDrive, it's the same answer. It's backed by SharePoint. That's your SharePoint My Site, your documents library. So. It's that palm olive moment. I need to have a picture of Madge with somebody. <laughs> Madge. You know, I need to have Your that. Fingers in the palm olive. That's right. It should be on my stream deck. I should just have the image and I hit a button and Madge appears on screen. So, yeah, I need to set this up. I actually, I want to set it up so I have, you know, the UHF, like lost signal the, with the tone. Beep, you know, I want to have that screen with that sound effect on a button together. So it just... You know, something happens and I can hit that. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's a good question. Let's see. Um, questions about licensing. <sighs> Before you do yeah. that, I had your, your yeah. uh, tweet jam the other day. I'm going to post this in the in oh. the chat comments. You get to drink from the fire hose. <sighs> this is just wrong, but so funny on so many levels. Now I need to pull this up. We need to see what you're talking about here. Yeah. Wait. It's a link to the that video segment from the oh, yeah. from UHF the movie with Weird Al. If you haven't seen it, it's not a particularly good movie, but it does have some funny I'm segments. About it. It's like a this. <laughs> you got to get past the ad first, of course. Yeah. <laughs> This guy's crazy. It's hilarious. Oh boy. So, <laughs> so on my so there's another one here. On my student account, the Office 365 is free, but online only. Is there a way to download the apps and use them offline and on my laptop? So the answer to that is probably not. I think the student edition is equivalent to the E1. Right. And you, right. the E1 does not include the offline client app. So sorry, uh, Angle, Angel, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Yeah, my recommendation for folks that are that, uh, and I realize that uh, if you got a student version, you've got the free digital, you know, the online, the cloud versions of those. But the office, uh, the, the home edition is what it's, uh, it's yeah. hundred bucks is 99 bucks. And you then get all of the downloads and up to five uh, devices, six, 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 six devices, even yeah. better. And you heard me going on with Hal about Microsoft 365 and the change in name from Mike, uh, 
Pro Plus to Microsoft 365 apps, I'm like, oh no, it's SharePoint 2013 all over again. Apps, apps, apps. It's like that moment in Being John Malkovich, if you've seen the movie, where he goes into his own head and the only thing people are saying is Malkovich, 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 and everyone looks like him. That's apps with SharePoint 2013. And now we're going to get that with Microsoft 365, Office 365. So bravo, Microsoft. You didn't learn the first time around. Hmm. Yeah. What we need now is uh, with apps and everything, teams, named teams, uh, and groups, is what we need is a product called Teams Groups you know, for apps or the app, you know, the Teams Groups app or something that's a completely yeah. different thing, but let's just name it that. Group apps for Teams, yeah. <laughs> good one. Good one. <laughs> Not a good one. No, you we, say those three things together. It's like crossing the streams in Ghostbusters. We we laugh and we, we grimace and yet you know it's going to happen. <laughs> Some marketing person who clearly doesn't know the history is going to come in and propose the idea and somebody is going to be drinking too much coffee and not paying attention during a meeting and it'll go through they'll go why did we ever do this everybody's screaming uh, <laughs> and further than that it's it's not going to be the last time i guarantee you it You're is right. not going to be the last time this is a merry-go-round right mm -hmm. you see the same horses again <laughs> Uh, let me see anything else, anything else that came up, you know, Mike, anything in the last week that uh, you've run into? Well, I just want to make a comment, uh, with, uh, Mr. Donahue, uh, talking about John Malkovich, a little bit of pop culture we're getting into McDonough, there. McDonough, my friend, McDonough. Uh, so McDonough, I'm sorry. McDonut uh, on a McDonough. good day. McDonough. <laughs> uh, but, uh, anybody look at Space Force or watch Space Force yet on Netflix? I have not. No. I saw, like, I saw Steve, like the Steve, Steve Carell's new thing. Yeah. It's, it's kind of ironic how it came out with the launch. I don't know if anybody watched the launch this weekend, of course. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was incredible. But uh, uh, there is an all star cast on there. And I got to tell you, I'm not impressed by the show itself. But John Malkovich is there. And, uh, you know, <laughs> yep, he's, he's the lead scientist. And, and uh, all kinds of people, so oh, wow. uh, everybody can kind of go out and look at that and get their own opinion of it. But uh, um, I thought the launch this weekend was phenomenal. Uh, watch it! I can't believe it took two hours just to get from one hatch to another hatch because he had to set up all the cameras. Yeah, yeah I saw it was that. like a, a laborious thing to set, make sure all the cameras were in the right position for you know the big show. <laughs> well, I kind of think nothing can go on a timeline in space. You know, you just <laughs> do things as you do them, not too fast. I always think of that when you see like, something that with that that meticulous of a setup of a camera shot. And I think of that guy, what is it, Survivor Man, that he, he does that where he talks about it, where he, have you ever seen that show, guys? I so it's, so it's, it, everybody knows the, what's his name, uh, um, Bear Grylls. Like his show, mm -hmm. uh, so he was like UK military guy, and so he does like a survival show, but he's got like a camera crew with him, and so there's a bit uh, you know it, it, there was some fluff out there in the media a few years back where they stage some situations. Like yeah, you watch the show, thirty seconds into it, you're like yeah, this is pretty well produced. It's still a great show. But Survivor Man is mm -hmm. one guy. He's literally he's out in nowhere, and it's just him. So mm -hmm. there will be a camera shot, a still shot, and him walk and wander off over the hill in the distance a mile away. He then has to come all the way back. He does that for the shot, comes back, gets his camera, and goes. And so he's talked about like that you know, that difference where he'll do that setup, but then it's just him with like three oh, wow. cameras. It's just, uh, it's an amazing show to watch. It's, it doesn't have the, again, it's not the slick production, but it's just, it's so much more realistic, uh, than Bear Grylls. Send the guy some predator drones or something. <laughs> to at least do the camera shots. Is that the one? Is the predator drones the one that does the, has the follow cam so you could send it off and it just, uh, you have it focus on an individual and just goes. 
All I know is that the Predator is one of the drones that carries missiles. So if you see oh. one of those in the sky, yeah. mm, best to get into a, a hardened area. It's either delivering an Amazon package or... <laughs> <laughs> Amazon package, yeah. From the <laughs> U.S. government. Hey, hey, you, I, I wouldn't be surprised when you can actually buy missiles on Amazon. Amazon government. You know, so, you get a little <laughs> log into an Amazon GSA government approved. account. Well, well, you know, we keep just spending money that we don't actually have, and uh, and he'll be able to be Bezos will be able to come in and buy us pretty soon. In the whole country. <laughs> uh, here's a question: We kind of discussed this a while back, um, two three weeks ago. It says, is it possible to lock a folder uh, to particular users in an open channel in Teams? So you've got user, you want to control access to a specific set of users or or restrict a user. So the answer is like if you so if somebody has access to a team, they can see and get access to all public uh, uh, channels and conversations and content for that team. Yes, now, but but you can go in and create a private channel that'll be restricted. They can't get into that without having access. And then the only other way of restricting it for that person, there's two ways. Um, one is that you can set up a restrictive permissions uh, uh, folder or, or not a folder, a, a list, a doc library in SharePoint, and then make that available and invite in only those that you want. The other way you can do that is in the existing structure. Um, it again locks everyone out by default, but is to put a lock on the uh, item itself, the, the document. Um, so lock the Excel file or, you know, so at the file level restriction, password protected. Um, the other option, well, if you do something in SharePoint, everyone can still have access to the folder and things will show up for them, but if somebody does not have access through SharePoint, will Teams be smart enough to do security trimming so that somebody doesn't see what they don't have access to? I don't know that it happens at the Teams level unless it's the action or the permission setting is coordinated through Teams because, you know, you, I can, we can set up a, you know, a SharePoint channel. We all, all four of us have access to it, but I could choose to leave you know, create a security group with Mike and create a folder within that, um, the document library that's backing the channel. And I could choose to leave Mike out of the security group, break inheritance, apply permissions to the folder. Mike would not have access to documents in that folder, but he would see that folder. And if I set it up right, I could also provide traversal permi permissions so that he could at least see what's there even though he would not be able to access it. But so the question becomes, is team smart enough to security trim items in that folder that he doesn't have access to read or write to? That's, a, that's probably worthy of a test at some point. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but it could be figured out uh, quickly enough. So if you follow that, it's definitely possible. It's just how user-friendly is it? And you can't adjust those settings through teams i um, followed is, it i followed it but it just seemed like uh for the for the average layman administrator that seems a little difficult <laughs> a little yeah. complex well you get to some <laughs> of the answers to these permissions questions they unfortunately do get down into the weeds yeah um i don't recommend doing some of these things because you know you're kind of working against the product at that point you know, do what it's good at and do it the way it does it natively so it can support you rather than fight against it. Right. Yeah, Neil Hutchkin, uh, Hutchkinson just uh, commented too, he says only with private channels and not, uh, and, and so not breaking inheritance in teams, which will make a total mess, which is kind of the point. This is, is uh, yeah. look, there's things that you can do that'll go out and be out, depending on what your requirements are, your needs are. Um, but the recommendation is stick with what the tool can do out of the box. And Neil, you can join us out here. I'll throw that out there. But Neil, Neil is shy. So, but Neil is a very bright guy. Yeah, I've read that somewhere. 
Uh, good times, good times. Yeah, Neil, if you'd like to uh, join, I can send you, forward you the link to the Teams meeting. Um, always good to have more people in the party. Happy faces there. So I started to go in as well and, and uh, comment on some of these that we're addressing uh, live. Um, yeah. Here, Neil, hey, hang on, I'm going to send you an invite. So. You guys chat for a second. Let me forward this over here. Talk amongst yourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a question for you guys uh, around the Office 365 domains. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I've been researching this a little bit, and it's kind of a, you know, I have my own home subscription, right? But then mm -hmm. you, you guys know we have our subscriptions to our, uh, our award. And I've always been kind of paranoid, right? So June, July 1st comes, and I don't know how that works for some people. Is, you know, we lose that access, and yeah. you know, that's a possibility. But I understand now that there are maybe some finagling workaround you can do to have your own custom domain for an Office 365 home subscription. Because usually you have to use, you know, it's just Outlook.com, or you can use the uh, what is it that the backdoor control domain on Microsoft, whatever dot on Microsoft.com. But you were never able to actually assign a, a vanity domain, if you will, a custom domain, unless it was tied to GoDaddy, I think something like that. But mm -hmm. I hear now you can actually do that or not. They may know. Um, <laughs> I just read something on that and I'm going to try and see if I can find it. I've got McDonough family online. But I've that, got it tied to my collab talk, but then again, I went through GoDaddy, so I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was just wondering because, uh, you know, if that ever goes away, I wanted the ability to continue that. So, there hey, he is. Hey, Ellie Moe. Hey, guys. How's it How are you doing? I'm doing. I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really positive. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm the whole new world of working in Azure now versus SharePoint. After 20 years, I finally gave up working in SharePoint. So, oh, we're sorry to see you go. So, well, I still hang around. I still hang out with the PFEs and people and you guys. So, um, I'll still be around. Good deal. You, this, you know, it's, it's, it's in my blood. It's in my DNA. What can I do? <laughs> yeah, it does leave an indelible mark on all of us. I think. What are you move? What are you moving on to? I'm a PM now in the Azure engineering team, working on oh. large scale, oh. like multi VM and data migrations from on prem oh, and from competing clouds. Yeah. It's, Very cool. It's, it's fun. Interesting. Big shoes to fill. Are you specifically on the data, the past side, like uh, data migrations in terms of SQL uh, type so migrations? Or? It's, it's more associated to the fast track team. So my prior role, um, I was the um, lead engineer for uh, migration tooling technology you know microsoft have acquired mover yeah fairly recently well i was the, yeah. one of the engineers that was doing all of the piloting work for that in terms of our cool. proof of concepts and can we onboard them okay so i learned a ton of linux doing that that was interesting wow. um the uh I, I decided to kind of look at migrations large-scale migrations as being something that i was kind of interested in it was kind of exciting so in Azure, we have an op we have a fast track team in Azure. So within that team, we have engineers yeah. and PMs. People were kind of surprised I went to a PM role versus an engineering role. Um, there was some personal reasons for that related to my US green card and things, which um, I couldn't really change my job title. I had to keep it as a PM. Um, then, uh, so now I work basically with, you know, I have customers, obviously for obvious reasons, I won't mention the customers' names, but I have some customers that are doing like large scale lift and shift. One customer's got over 15,000 VMs they're moving from multiple on premises data centers into Azure, IaaS. And then when it all lands in IaaS, they'll do um, rationalization, modernization, move some of the SQL platforms into SQL managed instances, consolidate, maybe even to things like Cosmos DB, the whole thing. But they've got to get out of their data center by a fixed contract time. And we run into yeah. that a lot. 
Um, in fact, I had one customer that their deadline was the 1st of June and we got the final VM moved by the 29th of May. So that was pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> Actually, mm. me, that that achievement was pretty pretty impressive. Just um, we do that, and then we do yeah, we do other things like we've got customers who want to do um, things like IoT. Um, and some of these are some of these are actually becoming turning into public case studies. One company, for example, um, are a um, diabetic remote monitoring company, and they are moving. They moved all their platform into Azure with mm. IoT, and they're doing um, like remote pickup, hundreds of thousands of signals a day, landing in Azure, being processed into Synapse Analytics and delivering a really good picture of the whole, almost the world in terms of how it ref reflects in their business to, uh, to the, 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 the signaling for, for, for diabetic monitoring and diabetic awareness. Mm. And we've got other others coming on board who want to do things, the same kind of thing with kidney dialysis, all kinds of things. So it's pretty, pretty impressive. So, when, did you, yeah. when did you uh, switch to a blue badge? How long ago? Oh, when was I a blue badge? Uh, 5th of September, 2005. I was going to say, wow. it was a while since you moved here. Yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been at Microsoft in the U.S. since, uh, oh, formally since the 18th of March, 2018. Um, oh, that was it. Okay. I've, I've been kind of working here, though, um, since, since mid-September, 2017. Okay. I know when I ran into you in that, the ignite a few years back. Um, that was the big topic of conversation. That was the big topic of conversation. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's been an interesting few years, but I'm super happy. I love my job. That's great. Love my Sounds like you're doing some cool stuff too. Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm super excited. It was a whole new kind of reset and rebooting my Microsoft career, should we say? Three, at, three orders of magnitude greater on the scale than anything I typically work with, but uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely groovy. Yeah, it's fun. I'm looking forward to getting us get all get all of us getting out again and being able to speak. You know, person. I know conferences are probably changed forever in terms of how they're going to run. Yeah, but I still feel obviously the the European Collaboration Summit. I know there's the one that starts tomorrow. Yeah, the, the GCS. You know the the, the the galactic one. Galactic. Um, I chose. I, I spoke to Spence. I chose not to talk on that one um, oh. just because I didn't really have time to prep anything. But I am. I will be speaking in in uh, Wiesbaden again in, in October, so that'll be fun. Cool. But do you know? I don't know. If, do you guys know a guy called Don Kirkham? I know the name. I don't know. I think I've run yeah. across him once or twice. Yeah, he sp he spoke at several conferences. He knows guys like Miguel Wood. He knows Spence very well. Okay. Um, so me and he, me and he are doing a session, a joint session on application modernization, moving a collaboration application from an on-premises environment into the cloud. That'll be so that should be fun. You'll have a lot of attendees at that, I think. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> then, then I have to deliver a good session, though. I don't have any worries about that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Everything you put out is gold. Are any of you folks going to be there? Uh, no, I'm on the GCS. In fact, <laughs> I owe Spence a video right now. Um, so once we get off this call, you know what I'm going to be doing. I I did. The, so you guys last week, I did that video. I am a total putz and dunce. I, for some <laughs> strange reason, I thought I was doing an intro video. And then we were going to go do sessions separately. And so I did an intro video. I got it out there and whatnot. And then he, Spence kept sending email. And I'm like, uh-oh, I did the wrong thing. So I sent him a note last week. And he's like, yeah, I was kind of wondering what you were saying in the email here. I said, I'm so sorry. <laughs> can I do something? Can I do it over? Um, and so he gave me till today. So I've got to get that to him. So, yeah, total yeah. putts. To answer your question, Neil, yeah, I'm, I, so I'm slated to speak as well. I've got to look. I've got a wedding right around there that I, we're supposed to uh, participate in, and so I have to look at travel schedule. But you know, it's one of those things where, like, I, like, do we? Can I even plan and figure the stuff out? Do I? Is it going to take extra long to get all the way over to Germany? And you know, it, what else is going on? It's just. Uh, it, it's it's difficult to make those kinds of especially if you you're flying 
you know, multi stops to, to, to get there. If I can't fly straight there, I've got to go through Amsterdam or London or somewhere. And what's that experience going to be like? But as of today, yes, I'll be there in October. My uh, rifle. Yeah, I know. My wife, so I go, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Neil. So I'm going to say, so just talking about weddings last year, um, the timing was perfect because we flew into London and then across to Frankfurt and then obviously to Wiesbaden. And then, then the weekend after the conference, um, my nephew was getting married in Katowice in Poland. Oh, wow. So we were, so we were there for like four days and then I went back to the UK, um, for family. So we were out for a good two and a half, almost three weeks out in Europe. So that was fun. Cool. Yeah. My wife wrote, uh, raised the point because, you know, there's a couple conferences I will be speaking at if they're going, uh, later on this year. SharePoint Fest up in Seattle and then Rackley's thing down in Branson. And, you know, I, I have a sense that Rackley is going to do the one in Branson because he's already postponed once and he would. I'm what's his, what's his timing there. for that? It's uh, September. I want to say the latter part of September, maybe. Um, okay. I can check, but it's in September, definitely. And he's picked a date. Um, and kind of move things around. But my wife made the point, it's like, well, even if you drive down there, how's that going to work if, you know, if they have a shelter in place order for two weeks, how are you going to have that conference? I'm like, that's a really good point. I don't know. Um, I think it's a lot of play by ear by now, right now anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Same challenge I have trying to go back to the UK to see family. They're all, um, they're, they're, they're shelter in place because my um one of my family members is, is considered uh, high risk because of a medical issue. So even if I go there, I can't see him anyway. I like stand and wave through the window. It's like, what's the point, what's the point in that? Well, yeah, we really. can just meet, we can just meet up on zoom, you know, or, or, or teams or something. So Save teams, yes, not zoom. Ticket. we meet on teams. <laughs> teams. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure I, if Christian hasn't informed you, he'd love to <laughs> regale you with his tales of, uh, doing battle with teams and trying to get things uh, going through OBS properly. But Well, it's interesting. I just yeah. did a, uh, so, you know, we, the, with the virtual marathon this last week and I did a call, I had um, Joel and, uh, and Willinger and um, uh, uh, my mind just uh, blanked here um, and, and Ryan uh, Scouten on talking about Galen was uh, not, unable to participate. So the, the four principal people, and of course, they had somebody in Asia Pacific and somebody over in Europe that were the go, the point people to to run that event. But they had uh, almost twelve thousand people participating in that event and ran it all through Teams, wow. and and they did things certain ways. And I so, so we kind of we were talking. So I recorded post tweet jam because uh, we were ta- did, we did kind of a, I don't know if you saw it, Neil. We did kind of a. Uh, 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 takeaways from both build and the virtual marathon event. And I said, I, guys, I'd really love to see a write up of your experience, what you did. Cause I know Microsoft was very involved and it, because it was kind of the digital replacement for the SharePoint conference. And, and, and uh, you know, what did you have to go and create from scratch? What were the, the problems? And, um, and apparently, I, I know if everybody saw, was wondering why there were uh, uh, the audio was crap at the beginning of Teeper's keynote because there was a, a multinational outage of teams right as the conference kicked off. Yeah, <laughs> Ryan was telling me about that. But um, but anyway, it, it, it you know, I think what's exciting is that by September October for these online events that have to do that, there's so much more learning that's coming from that. And I know Microsoft is working on a, a couple of utilities to add to the Teams experience specifically for user groups and conferences and things. So they're, they're, you know, they're, they're working at building out some of the missing pieces to make Teams a more viable solution for this kind of, of, uh, uh, of meetings. So uh, yeah, I think, oh. uh, sorry, I think from a, from a scale perspective, Perspective, the, the the demand for just pure compute power to run Teams in terms of the demand on it these days is off the scale crazy. I've seen some numbers inside 
um, various, you know, confidential things at Microsoft. Obviously, um, you're going to share the all numbers. The details. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. The the numbers of you know magnitudes of scale of demand on CPU core resources is like crazy, and um, the, the the prioritization, you know, the the fast um, execution and getting the new features, the you know, the getting to the nine window video call, that kind of thing, um, way, way faster than we ever would have done has been pretty impressive, actually. The whole modern desktop workspace piece of the office um, and what is it, experiences and devices stack is where it all fits, has been super impressive in my my opinion. Now, obviously, we've, we, we've probably released things way faster than we would like to um, or would have done under normal circumstances. But it's pretty cool to see the to see the response and see the sheer demand. I know my I was talking to my daughter the other day, and I, obviously I won't mention, but she loves Teams. Her school uses Teams, and but since they've all gone remote, they've now started to use other remote working technologies, and she hates it. She's like, I don't like it. I want to coming up. Why we have Teams at school, so why can't we have Teams at home? <laughs> it's like so it's just it's it's just it's interesting to see i mean they're, they're all great platforms and you know if we if we just mentioned the three big ones right and please free, i'll mention them anyway teams obviously zoom and the new is it new the meet the google one the google dot uh, meet.google.com or something yeah i saw they're that all, that have any numbers around it yet are people using that i don't i i haven't yeah. seen numbers it's announced, i just saw some advertisements over the weekend yeah um you know the fact that all the big technology companies I'm surprised. I, I don't know. Do Amazon have a, have an offering there as well? I'm surprised they don't. If they if they don't. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. I don't recall the name, but the the internal employees are, are required to use it. Um, I'd have to look up the name, but they do have their they do they do have their own. I know they've got streaming I mean, video. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, obviously, as a as a, as a Microsoft employee, I have my preferences, as as you would expect. But I think the way that all of the technology companies have come together across the board, not just the big ones, but all, you know, everyone has come together in such a, like a, a way to just, it's almost like a seamless transition from being in classrooms to being at home, being working from home or being in the office and working at home. I mean, I, I work from home 100% anyway. I'm fortunate enough to, to have that opportunity. I go into the office when I want to, but I think all, everyone has literally just stepped up and gone, let's fix this. Let's make this better for everybody. And I think it's really cool. Not like I can say, obviously I'm a Microsoft employee, so I advocate Microsoft, but I think all of the all of the technology companies have done fabulous in, in enabling everybody to, to work better and smarter. It's been a real make or break time for companies. And mm -hmm. those that have been able to step up have seen the results and the benefits of that. But I don't I want to see numbers when this all pans out, I want to see just how many companies we've lost as a result of yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, I know we, we were, so we do a, we do a walk in the morning. We, we, we get up in the morning around 6.30, uh, 7. And we do, before we start work, we do a 5K walk around our neighborhood. Um, appropriately socially distanced. So, you know, we, <laughs> people are walking on the same side, towards us on the sidewalk, we step into the street, that kind of thing. We do, we, we just for you. say hi and walk past. But we were walking the other day past um, this house and the guy and, and, and his wife, and their kids and they're sat on the driveway in lawn chairs just having a drink it's early evening and so this wasn't a morning walk this was an evening walk and they're sat on, sat on the driveway and they just said hi and you know how we introduced ourselves but we live like two streets down so on and so forth and then we got chatting away and the guy says so let me ask what do you do are you still in work how's work going are you still in work we said yeah yeah we're, we're working oh who do you work for we work for microsoft and the guy just stood up and literally applauded us and wow I'm like what what he went you have no idea. He says, Teams has saved my business. Mm. He said, I would have gone under if we didn't have Teams. My, wow. my, my business has been able to operate fully functional. Now, I guess there's, there's you know, similar stories for Zoom, similar stories for Google Meetups, whatever it might be, Hangouts, all those kind of things. But it's pretty phenomenal that people are recognizing that and able to run their businesses completely now. And Just I wonder what feedback. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. So it, that's been filed as great feedback. It was phenomenal to hear. But I also wonder whether people are now going to be, you know, what? I don't need to run an expensive office anymore. Yeah, I, I think I, you see a lot. Outside, and I, it actually yeah, even at Microsoft. 
That, that was actually there was news that that was out on uh, one of the business channels. I think Bloomberg was talking about the massive hit to the commercial real estate market. Mm -hmm. It just it, it, it just makes sense. I think this has forced a lot of organizations that had prior to this idea like, no, we don't have that that kind of work from home if you're sick or or whatever. But they they didn't have a formal policy. It forced them to think about this and to realize. Uh, what a lot of us that have worked from home, it's for, for me, it's been, you know, just over a decade, uh, you know, how the the numbers don't lie. The, the, the folks that work from home that are able to, obviously not every role can, can be done. Always have to slip that caveat in there. Yeah. But productivity goes up, uh, you know, it, it, the harder part of that, this, the transition, and we all know this is making sure that we make time for the balance for the work-life balance right, it's right it's actually harder when you work from home to divide that time i i'm generally online by 7 a.m and at, you know at midnight maybe turning off the monitor at midnight kind of thing and it's you know you go and get other personal stuff done that needs to be done during the day but you know you're working longer hours and you're working on more things but a lot of organizations have started to figure this out that like why do we have this brick and mortar uh when most of the work that we do we're sitting and looking at screens the whole day anyway right right and i'll and, and i'll add the twist to that is i was on a call last week uh, where i had a couple of developers that are from silicon valley and they were actually asking the question hey, you know what, I agreed to come to this company. Uh, part of the reason of the incentives that I got was not, you know, I don't have to pay for commute anymore, right? So they used to get commute reimbursement and stuff like that. But they're saying, if I'm going to work at home, uh, one of the a couple of things was, you know, I got gym membership. I got, you know, that they had a gym that I could work out at. Um, they gave me free food. Uh, they gave me free drink. They gave me this. I don't get this now when I'm at home. So how is a company going to compensate that for me? Yeah. And I'm sitting here. I'm I'm sitting back a little bit, being a little old school, working from home for so long. Going, I've never gotten free lunches. Wrong time I've to ask that gotten, question. You know all well, the stuff you're talking yeah. about. So. But the other thing that hit the news was kind of the flip side to that is companies saying, you know, um, and I think there's a positive side to this, but companies saying. We're not going to pay the additional dollars if you're not having to commute. Now, the right. flip side of that is that a lot of universities have not figured that out yet. They're like, if we're just going to do online, we can't be charging what we're charging these students. Um, but then, of course, the the other sides of that is, uh, long said, look, I was born and raised in the San Francisco Bay Area. I've done many startups, VC funded startups. I did that. That's where I escaped that world and when I moved to Seattle years ago. Um, but the of, the of the the spending half my day on the road is part of my commute. I commuted at least three hours a day for eight years. Yuck. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so I, I like I've been to, had that experience. Uh, it is the fact that uh, you know I understand the value of concentrating all the startups, the technology, all of that brain power in the Bay Area, and and that the rise of costs of living and everything else that's there. But I've long said that in it, being in collaboration technology, you know, you don't have to limit yourself to that geographic space. You don't have to require people to move to that location. You really can in this virtual environment go and hire the best people you can find wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the fact that I will charge less as, as an employee, I, you know, I cost less because I'm working from home and I'm okay. Like what's in my pocket when you look at the grand scheme of things is as much or more than if I had to commute and add those, all those additional costs, the wear and tear and cost of my car and insurance yeah. and meals and all those different things. But also I have the flexibility to, to go and work for companies that I like, and I like working with wherever they are in the world. And I'm not yeah. tied down to that geography. But the companies, the companies themselves were, you know, the, the people were making the point that, it's a, an incentivized thing, right? So when you get hired, you you know, hey, we'll give you this, we'll give you that, we'll give you a bonus, we'll you know whatever. But the companies themselves have to start thinking of new ways, new incentives. 
because they don't have the physical space anymore to offer employees. They don't have the the food. They don't have the 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 ability to you know have uh, transportation for them and their bikes and their scooters and whatever else you got going out there and, and on the west coast and east coast. We don't have that in the Midwest yet, so it's kind of like you know it takes yeah. a while to catch up, but. Um, they, they're sitting there going, I don't have that ability anymore. The company doesn't give me that anymore. This and moment like, in history brought to you yeah. by Darwin and Corona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love the things that Microsoft have done. For example, you know, we're still paying our, like the hourly paid employees to operate like the, 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 the various cafes and the cleaning staff around the, the business. At, um, at well, your transportation people are taking a huge hit, I heard. Huge. Well, well they, they are to a degree, but they're also Microsoft are paying them 100% of their wage. Yeah. We're still paying That's them to this. Like, even though we're like several months down the line, we're still paying our cleaning staff, our cafe staff. We're still paying the, the transportation team, the, the people that run the connects. They're still, they used to get paid by ride. And they're just being paid. Microsoft are taking that hit because they, you know, we the multiple reasons it's the right thing to do. And obviously you don't want to, Imagine if we suddenly said, oh, everyone's back in the office tomorrow and all these people have gone and found jobs somewhere else, right? That's going to damage the business severely. But there's other things we've done. If I look at my team, for example, my team just said, you know, take a day off next week. Take one day off and don't count it against your vacation or sick time. Just just take the day. I'm like, okay. Oh, then, it, then they did another thing. They just went, all right, everybody in the organization gets to expense $200 towards anything you want. Yeah. Any people I remember a morale, those, a morale boost. those gestures? I bought, I, I bought a new guitar. <laughs> it's like, okay, thank you. So, oh, God. Um, a, cheap, a cheap one that I can just thrash the crap out of, but it's still, still, still a good, still decent. Um, <laughs> little things like that. And now, and now my manager's talking about, my manager has actually just petitioned our entire organization. You know what? We should be paying our employees broadband fees as well, we should be paying our, our internet fees. So we're probably going to get that. And they already they already cover um, for cell phone usage, for example, because our cell phones, it's kind of weird. I don't know if you know, in the UK and in most of Europe, Microsoft actually buy you a phone and pay all of the fees for personal and business use. Nice. They just pick up, the, pick up, the, pick up the, the cost. In the US, they don't. In the US, you buy your own device, but they allow you to expense a certain amount. I think it's like $75 a month. So it's things like that that, that just make... The transition to Microsoft, and you were talking about like fitness programs. And Christian, was you talking about gyms? I think it was earlier. Yeah. Microsoft had this program called Stay Fit, which allows us to expense every year eight hundred dollars for fitness equipment. Wow! So, so things like you know, I can buy an Apple. I can buy my Apple Watch. Right? Sorry, it's charging right now, but it's here. The Apple Watch. I can expense it. Um, a bowling ball, running shoes, football equipment. Everything, anything, a ton of stuff fits into the program. And where do you well, live, Neil? When, I want to knock over. I live house. in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one place to knock over a house. It's a bit, it's, it, the it's, customized yeah, bowling ball doesn't do you any good. It, it's fit for his hand, Sean. And Sean, I, Sean, I won't talk. There's things in the house what, what may make you not want to come and knock over this house, but I'm not, I won't say anything more. <laughs> um, but the. Um, but think, you know, things like that. And then what they did was when everyone started working from home, they went, OK, so now we're going to extend this and say to not just fitness equipment, but also ergonomic equipment. So if you want to buy a raised lower desk, standing desk, you want to yeah. buy a new chair, you want to buy monitors, you want to buy anything that makes your working life at home easier. That's now all included in that same eight hundred dollars. Sweet. So they, they, they've just gone. They, they it's. It's been eye-opening. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to say Microsoft is the perfect employer, but they they are certainly making ground and making great strides to take care of the people. For sure. Make sure you appreciate what you got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, look at that time. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if there are any like last questions. I don't see there's nothing that's posted. Oh yeah, Office 365 questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a good discussion. I just see the I, I don't see anything new that's come in. Yeah, actually on the uh, three six five page, I actually uh, went, worked backwards, and I think we addressed some of the most recent it, it on stuff that we touched on last week. So um, I'll comment on a few of them when we get off too. Yeah. So 
but uh, well, no, I, it, we're we're over time. But yeah, appreciate Neil. Thanks for joining this, this session. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Sean, I, Hal and Mike you, as well. If you do this periodically, let me know. I know I know you do, but um, we do it every I'm, Monday. I am generally month. free at this exact time, so I'll be happy to join again. Yeah, I think I, I think I sent you. It's the same link. It's the same team. So just uh, add it on repeat. We're at 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. every Monday Pacific time. Um, so uh, we we do EMEA and APAC times. Yeah, tonight for your APAC okay. buds. Yeah. Well, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. I can't make it today because I have my end of year review, and that's yeah. kind of important. So yeah. I need to be there. But starting next week, I'll join as often as I can. Awesome. If you don't show up to this end of year review, it might show up in next year's review or be relevant <laughs> in this year's review. So yeah, yeah there is good. the next year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Great to see you. Neil. Okay. Thanks, right. guys. Thanks a lot. Take care. Appreciate you inviting me. Thank Catch you. you later. Bye. Bye. And I've hey, gathered you here. What, and I'm just going to do the one more share. Oh, oh so you, much share. So much sharing. <laughs> <laughs> you got to mute that other stream there, yeah. Sean, yeah, did you do your it. homework from the from my email after this morning? Homework? You didn't. Are Are you once again blocking my emails? <laughs> I've never been blocking your emails. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, we all oh. believe that, Sean. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, uh, we'll see. Mike just joined. Mike, are you there? Mike Nelson? Yeah. Oh, wow. Did he come through? Did he? Oh, no. I didn't I see know. So Neil is here. Yep. Yes. Excellent. Hey, Neil. Welcome back. I saw Mike up here. Was that? Uh, hang on. Let's see if he messaged me elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the homework. the homework question, Sean, was uh, in the chat uh, at the end of our last session this morning was to bring a question with you. Oh, OK. Uh, well, I answered a bunch in the uh, actual group today and referenced things. And uh, hopefully some of those folks have decided to join us. Answering questions outside of these two hours, that doesn't count. <laughs> You get no points. <laughs> it's all uh, about the points. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything that we that you answered that we had not discussed? Um, I would have to go look at the book of faces to know that. Yes, the book of faces. Uh, book of faces. Yes. So, you have the book of faces. Is that anything like a bit of common knowledge? No, it's uh, <laughs> there's nothing knowledge. There's nothing that of the the book of faces that any lasting value at all, really. But, <laughs> um, yeah. All worldly I've disputes just, are I've settled been, gracefully. I've, I've just been fighting on the book of faces, and we just had a recent local protest. Mm -hmm. given the whole current situation without going into too much detail. And I was very like, can the protesters just not smash the windows of all the local businesses and stuff? Can they just, just you know, be peaceful and be nice? Can't. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's getting pretty crazy everywhere, I think. Yep, I agree. Yep. Agreed. Well, uh, so there is a question uh, somebody asked. So Corey asked out in the uh, Microsoft Teams um, community group on Facebook, um, asking about, I'll kind of paraphrase here, is the best way to save an email in a channel, is it to forward to the channel's email address? And, and so my the short answer is like, look, the I don't know how you're defining the best way to save an email. Best way to save it, it would be to not delete it. <laughs> Don't send but, it in the first place. Make uh, it part of the discussion. Um, but if you want to make it part of the discussion, but yes, I mean, you can do that. If you want to open that up, uh, yeah, you can email if it's been as the uh, you know, team's owner has enabled the ability to email um, to a channel, mm -hmm. um, that capability, then yeah, you can send it in there. 
have a you know conversation around it, it then becomes part of the you know the context, the collaborative activity for the project or team. Or yeah, whatever. that's true. You've got to step out of the uh, context of the flow of teams, though, to read it. Um, mm-hmm. Better to gather your thoughts and place them within the the actual dialogue. I'm thinking, but well, this kind of goes to a broader topic, and uh, you know, we've been talking for a few years, and we kind of have this with the Bing search, the expanded search, where if you're logged in and you do a search, it'll actually search through whatever you're logged into and have permissions to. So you'll get a federated search result of public, you know, websites as well as, you know, SharePoint sites of your desktop materials, of your LinkedIn connections, kind of all those different things. Right. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. And and it kind of goes back to, I mean, we've had flavors of that um, through SharePoint search uh, with the fast acquisition. So going back to, what was that? 2006, 2007. Uh, we've had some variations over the years. Was it 2008? Yeah, it was April the 12th, 2008. Okay. Yeah, believe me, believe me, believe me, Christian, I, I know that acquisition yeah. inside and out. Well, I, <laughs> April the 12th, 2008. I was, I was in MMS, <laughs> so that was still while I was on the team when that happened. Yeah. Um, so it was, I remember sitting in a couple meetings and I was, I was on the SharePoint side of things. And so starting to have those conversations is like, excellent. And then it was a hurry up and wait. We saw no integrations for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. It took yeah. a while. Till, till yeah. 20, well, it was SharePoint 2010 before we integrated, right? Right. Well, yeah. 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 Integration of a form, I guess. Um, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. It was a 2013, we got the, the full baby. Well, the product. point I was going to ask, though, that federated search result, I mean, the, the people have asked this question, like, you know, where do I go? I want to go and do a search result. And I want, and remember, we saw back with the uh, the, the profile information, the SharePoint search, where we were starting to get the, the like, the Silverlight organizational chart. It was during that era in the federated search result to get so people, results, people results as well as topics and hashtags and content from multiple locations and email and and the the when the yammer acquisition happened and there was talk about well why can't i get all of that access and of course it wasn't possible to get a truly federated view across all of those different workloads so how many places let me maybe it depends on you let the crawler right well, I was going to ask, like, how many search experiences are there now within Microsoft 365? Well, we're trying to consolidate it down to one. Yeah, that's like the micro the concept of Microsoft Search, but yeah. it's not. Yeah, which it is, is by f- nowhere near a truly holistic view of search across all of the possible data repositories that we have, either across Office 365. I mean, Yammer, I guess, is included in that. Yep. It really isn't today, but it, but we're, we're, we're moving in that direction, trying yeah. to move in that direction. It's cool. It's like trying to cram too much stuff in when packing. You just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, 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 and, Chris, and, Chris, and Christian alluded to it earlier, and it's a very valid comment, right? You know, we, we, the, we, act, we acquired fast. We had mm-hmm. to bring fast into the fold. Then we acquired Yama. We had to bring them into the fold. There's, you know, it's 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 somewhat easy to build a search engine on technology that you've owned for many years, but when you then try and shoehorn that into technology that you is new, it takes time. And and, and I will I won't lie, I, you know, as much as I'm a Microsoft guy, I think it's taking too long. I won't lie, it is. We need to have a single instance where I can find all of my stuff. Yep. Yeah. We, well, we, re- I agree. we really need that. And I well, think, I but think I that's think a real... Different, what, what's different from back with the fast acquisition is we we have the concept of the graph API. We have the Microsoft uh, you know, graph we and we're starting yep. now to capture all that information. I mean, it was incredibly hard. I mean, that that's the 
the other re- part of the reason I ask is that, you know, so my path into collaboration technology, I mean, I was doing work for EDS and then Pacific Bell was in the data warehousing world. A big part of my job, I owned all the front end applications to all the marketing systems. So capturing all this information and our, and our uh, project management tools and all of our, uh, you know, analytical tools and merging in GIS data and do, like doing all this for the phone company, massive amounts of data. Um, in, in fact, the project that I worked on for almost 18 months, I kind of joke now, is that the data set was um, smaller than my current music drive, <laughs> <laughs> which is insane to think about. That's a statement. Uh, I know, yeah. I know. Well, my music drives Spotify, so what can I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it's a, uh, yeah, then you have that limited catalog, Neil. I mean, I, there's, there's so much of my stuff that's not on oh. any of the any of the systems. But no, it's, yeah. it, you know, so but with so much of the effort around that. So I, I, I get that, that we need to have that. Uh, we need to have the graph to be able to tie together all of those pieces, all of those, those the surfaces, all of the workloads, um, the next problem is then how do you surface all those pieces? Oh, yeah. Really, you know. All graph is the master abstraction. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, we got some oh, wicked echo. Echo. Oops. 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 <laughs> I think it's how. Yeah. I'll just arrive. We got echo. So yeah, the gra- graphs are interesting, and the whole the whole concept of a graph with respect to when you think about the technical implementation of a graph behind the scenes i love it i i don't know if you dug if you guys i'm assuming you guys have dug in because you're all smart people but it's really it's really unique in terms of how it works and i think the more people get to know it the more people get to understand it the more people will make more use of the 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 api calls right we mentioned this earlier today we talked about you know calls to the graph what can the graph do what can the graph deliver and there's multiple products that have a graph you know microsoft have a graph facebook have a graph everything everyone these days has a graph and i think it's 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 so different you know growing up with microsoft technology for the last 20 years it's only in the last three or four that we've really begun to really understand what the graph can can do for us yep yeah and how we can build not only applications but but discover information across that platform and i i I love it personally i I think it's fabulous graph is becoming synonymous with a gang of fours uh facade pattern everybody's got a Mm -hmm. graph and you know you put it out there and it uh facilitates access to all the reaches and people with the experience in the various silos industries uh, wire up their technologies to that graph and we get to it cheers by the way yeah and i just uh, posted a link in there i mean something else that i've uh, you know want to go dig into more but i at inspire last july uh, and for those that don't aren't familiar with microsoft <laughs> inspire which is the it's Microsoft's sales and marketing focused conference. Um, and I spent a bunch of booth time. It's actually the best event I find um, for going and spending time in the Microsoft product team booths um, and, and doing deep, deep dives. So learning about what's happening and I'm a marketing guy. And so the marketing systems and what's happening around the open data initiative and the partnership with uh, with SAP and Adobe, and I've talked to people from both those teams at both of those other organizations. And honestly, I like, uh, um, and I'd love, you know, maybe Neil, I don't know how much you know about what's going on inside Microsoft, but I get the sense that both of those other companies are further ahead than Microsoft in taking advantage of this initiative. Um, it, it, I'm sure it's just that Microsoft, the stuff that's going on is just not yet visible externally. Um, but the idea of being able to go like Adobe, I've had some in-depth conversations, uh, <laughs> yeah, in-depth yes. conversations of um, uh, you know of what what they're doing and and how they envision uh, th- this program and leveraging data from the other two companies is just some really mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. stuff. It's very exciting. 
Yeah, from a Microsoft standpoint, I, I mean, obviously there's things I can say, things I can't say, and there's things I don't even know. Mm. So <laughs> I, I'm not going to allude to those because I don't know what they are. But, you know, we, we are very, 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 very embraced with changes in the marketplace, changing what's going on, trying to adapt and not only be in a competitive space, but also be in a collaborative space, right? We don't consider SAP a, a, a competitor. Right. We consider SAP a partner. Right. And we, you know, I, I look at the projects I'm working on right now, and I have a number of projects which are SAP based. I have a customer right now that has over 300 applications based on SAP. And they're like, all right, but we don't want to run this in our data center anymore because we don't want to run a data center anymore. Can we just move this to Azure? Like, okay. So we we work with SAP. We work with engineers. We have I have engineers in my team that are ex SAP engineers that are helping me migrate that. So it's not about pure competitiveness. It's about collaboration and partnership. And that's how I see most of these things happening. You know, we work together, even with AWS and Google. And you know, we 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 don't we don't necessarily see this as a it's you are it's a you or us situation mm -hmm. it, it's a you know it, i have customers today that like you know we're going to run we're going to run xyz services in azure okay fine cool what's your dr strategy okay well our disaster recovery strategy is we're going to run it in azure in uh, aws okay cool how do we help you make that work so, so I think more and more the clouds, the different public clouds, even when we move into federal and government space, we're starting to get to this synergy where it's not a pure com compete. It's a how do we collaborate and how do we make our customers successful sure. across a multi-cloud strategy? Yeah. And I think multi-cloud strategy is a... a huge topic when we talked earlier today about conferences and things i think multi-cloud strategy is something that's going to be a really really hot topic over, yeah. over the next two to three years i think you're right because because you know systems fail unexpected actions happen and you know like look at the mic okay microsoft last year we had a major failure in one of our data centers that took out azure ad Mm -hmm. That was catastrophic for services across the globe. So if if customers could fail back to AWS or fail back to GBC, they'd, they'd be carried on working. Alternatively, maybe AWS have a failure and they can fail back to Azure or GPC. Or Google have a failure and they fail back to Azure or, 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 or AWS. I think we need to operate more synergistically yes of course being a microsoft employee working in the azure space the more business i can bring into azure the better it is for me i'm not a salesman i'm not gauged on my sales i'm gauged purely on my effort doing my job and i i love the azure platform i really do but, but i think across the board when we think about collaboration and cloud, collaboration is way more than just, I'm gonna operate in the Microsoft cloud, or All I'm gonna operate yeah. in, the, in yep. the AWS cloud. It's, yep. It has to be a, a synergistic view of all of it. What works right for my company? Yeah, totally. And that's what we have to drive. You know, this is a topic that uh, in the regional directors, the RD lists, is discussed you know, frequently and different different things around this, but specifically around this. And honestly, when Teams launched, um, so what three and a half years ago, um, you know, some of the very first feedback was some of the the you know were questions around uh, the multi tenant, just just from the Teams perspective. And I know what you're talking about is broader than that, um, but the you know the, the reality is that ten years ago. The, uh, a large portion of companies, like they were like a single OEM stack. Like we're a Microsoft shop. And so we would do everything. Like 
like those companies don't exist anymore or barely any of them. They, they all have their, they've got systems, they have, you know, key workloads in, you know, different divisions might be using those different clouds, those different services. And so uh, it, it's, it's just, it, it's foolish to, to not answer some of those fundamental questions. And I think this, you know, the easier that Microsoft can make it to go back and forth and, it, and yeah, there's going to be uh, Microsoft uh, uh, salespeople, especially that are going to be like, why would we want to make it easier for people to move off of our platform um, yeah. and leverage others? And then then you get into the, you know, well, they're, you know, uh, it, it, you know price shopping, your know, price comparisons. <laughs> well, they're a little bit you know uh, cheaper on this now and jumping back and forth. It's like I, I always wondered about like T-Mobile offering phone service. Like, we'll buy you out of your contracts, like, but not force you to sign another contract. It's like, great, pay me off. I'll stay with you for two months and then I'll jump back over and have yeah. all my bills paid, you know? I, it, uh, I was I'm not at saying it. anybody go do that. <laughs> phone data portability. You're, yeah. You know, that's another great example. And but that, but that that's exactly, it. Sean, that's, that's a, I'll let you finish the thought. Like that's exactly the portability. I own my data. I'll take it wherever I want to take it. Uh, and, and for my own reasons, like I, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, burdened, you know, under your, your service. And especially if it's a shoddy service, I, I, you know, my key responsibility is keeping my business up and running and access to my data and wherever that takes me. And the, the burden is then on Microsoft and the other OEMs to provide the best mm -hmm. services. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Portability. That's about it. Portability. I can, yeah, I can give a cla I can give a classic example. Uh, um, so back in 20, when was the last Ignite in Orlando? Not last year, the year before. 2018 was when I was there. Oh, okay. So we did, we, we, we held a workshop on the day before ignite it was the hybrid sharepoint 2019 sharepoint office 365 onedrive hybrid session you know the session we've been delivered for a long time was me the usual subjects suspects sorry me <laughs> spence jason himmelstein troy harbour sorry sorry not troy harbour troy star and the usual people right we were delivering that session and and i was trying to find a way, Bill Bear, right? I was trying to find a way to deploy over 600 virtual machines into Azure, mm -hmm. all with unique DNS address spaces, <clears throat> all with all so that the people in the room could access the environments and, and do the workshops and actually not just listen and sit there and get, get destroyed by PowerPoint all day long, but actually do stuff. Sure. And what turned out was the most appropriate way to do it was, yeah, I'm running Azure, I'm running a PowerShell script, and I managed to deploy 600 VMs in about 12 minutes into Azure. Nice. Using Azure Pass, really easy, right? Once I got it all refined, it took me like three weeks to get it worked out, and then it was like, try again, try again, try again, everything works out great. And then I'm like, okay, but now I need to work out the, the, the best way to configure the DNS for these solutions. Because each student needed a unique DNS, right? They needed, they had a unique on-prem AD. They yeah. needed to replicate uh, and synchronize that AD with Office 365. How do I do that? The, best way and what worked out for me was i won't lie i just abandoned azure dns completely because amazon dns route 53 if you're familiar with that service just no. worked out completely perfectly so we ended up delivering a, a office 365 sharepoint 2019 hybrid solution that was all backed by amazon dns but i, I think see. that's that's a a valuable message going forward that says, listen, we don't have to be separate. We can work together, right? We can collaborate and we can make this happen. Sure. And, and I love Amazon Route 53 DNS services, the, the PowerShell functionality and capability. 
is out of this world amazing. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, Azure is also really good, but it didn't work for me because of what I was trying to achieve. It didn't work for me. So I think it's not just a case of saying this cloud service works and therefore we're going to go down this cloud service and nothing else. I mean, it's, it's global DNS, right? I mean, global DNS works everywhere. Yeah. Once you've got, once you once you've registered those those host names, it's all fine. And I think this is for me personally. This is a key thing. There is ultimately you have to think of, despite the fact we have multiple public cloud services, Microsoft, Amazon, Google. And Rackspace have a cloud service, right? There's multiple mm -hmm. cloud services all, over, all across the place. Right. And I apologize for the folks that I didn't mention that. I know there's many, many others. Sure. Ultimately, it's one public cloud. And you, you should be able to pick and choose the services you want to use from each cloud that suits your needs. And yeah. they should be synergistic and work together. Yeah. That's and what it started. I think two years ago, two, two years ago, I, I, for one, proved that that worked. I was using a combination of Amazon and Azure and making it all work together. And we had a, we had a, delivered a fa fabulous workshop. It was great. Yeah. So I want to make sure that we, I, my, my perspective is, I guess, say, I want to make sure. I don't really have a say in it, but I want, I want, I, I hope that as companies, despite the fact that we're obviously competitors, despite the fact that we're competing for the same business, we should also continue to be compatible and continue to work together to make sure that everything we can, we can, you know, okay, I want my, I want my compute in Azure, but I want my DNS in AWS, but I want my, whatever it might be in Google. It, yeah. it should be, it should just work. That's the only way and to do it. Right? I think, think customer. I think providing, prov yeah, providing that to our customers gives us our customers the best opportunity for success. Yeah, you got to do that. That's that's how I feel about it. I agree with you entirely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, if you do, you know, if your vanilla is better than mine, by all means, let's eat your vanilla, <laughs> and then. But I've got a pretty good chocolate. Come on to my place to uh, yeah, there some you chocolate. Go. You can make this work. So we'll have some chocolate and some vanilla. Like and just <laughs> pick and these can juice. be donuts or ice cream or anything you like. Yep. Because Friday is National yeah. Donut Day, gentlemen. That's right. It is. Yes, it is. You so you have your Dunkin' Donuts with a Starbucks coffee. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> Starbucks coffee. I'm just going to be a Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, I, my... I think I think I'm gonna. I, I may have to go and do a live stream from Krispy Kreme. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't. That's you cool. better watch out. At least here in Cincinnati, if you walk into a Krispy Kreme, it's pretty much cordoned so, off. So, so Chris, yeah, Christian, if you're going to do that, you need to measure your waistline right now. Oh, I know. And then, <laughs> I know. Then, then measure it on Friday night. There's the Krispy Kreme <laughs> challenge. You familiar with that? No. Oh, what is that? That is a race that is run. You, <laughs> you're going to love this. In fact, it's about a two mile run, I believe. You run to a Krispy Kreme, you eat a dozen donuts, and you run. That's the easy part. Yeah. And you run back. I couldn't eat a dozen donuts if I tried. Yeah, that would be a tough back half. Yeah. Krispy Kreme donuts. So. I'm not saying I won't can you, consider can you doing eat, that. Can you eat them on the run back? <laughs> I suppose if you can eat and run, yeah, probably. But uh, dozen donuts down. Look it up. I mean, th this is a real thing, guys. No, I was thinking about that. You know, back when I used to run the marathons and they had the power gel stuff. I'm just thinking that the, uh, a Krispy Kreme, a couple donuts, can't cannot be a, as much of a caloric intake of those little sugar packets that they hit you with. It has like sugary caffeine frost. It's like eating frosting that's caffeinated. Oh, and it's out of the packet for an energy burst. Hey, when oh. you're when you're running, you know, uh, uh, my 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 
target was always a I'm a half marathon guy. I did the one full marathon, got it framed on the wall. I don't have any plans of doing another full marathon. I'm a half marathon guy. But yeah, those those packets are are uh, fantastic. It's about the last five miles uh, is when I run into I have that need for some sugar <laughs> and caffeine. I understand that? Yeah, I'm a tough I'm a I'm a tough mother guy. Huh. So it's like it's like 18k. Yeah, I've seen you in Tough Mudder stuff. I've yeah. seen some pictures with you, <laughs> Neil. <laughs> yeah. Looking pretty it's dirty. Such fun now. Yeah, yeah, very, very dirty. So, uh, I'm, but even though, even on those, they, they like there's like every 5K, there is a, um, like a refreshment stand not, where you get, yeah. they give you water and energy drinks and you can eat like peanut bars, like full of calories and stuff just to keep you going and it it, is interesting but i love i love my tough mudders so i'm setting up a team in dallas this year to do this one in september Hmm. you have done my son wants to do one with me this fall there's one going on here i think early fall but i've never done one well you should do it because the thing is with the tough mudder one of the things that they tell you i know we're <laughs> we're, we're like the furthest possible tangent we could be away from office 365 and collaboration right now. it happens <laughs> but, well no collaboration yeah. no <laughs> pl- right. collaboration right so yep the one thing with the the, the tough mudder does is you start they have a they have like a big chant it's all it's like it's not a marathon it's a sprint it's not about who finished quickest it's about getting everybody over the line. So if you have to walk it, you just walk it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Nobody cares. That's Nobody cool. judges. You just walk. It's, it's fine. Yeah. It's, eight, it's what is it? 12, 12 and a half miles. And I think the fastest I've done it is in is about three and a half hours. So if you consider that, that's pretty slow if you were just running. But at the same time, the obstacles. And then the, there's obviously weights at the obstacles on some of them where you have to kind of wait. Oh, okay, there's a big line. I've got to wait like 20 minutes for someone else to get through this. <laughs> and then there's scenarios where you fall off stuff. <laughs> and I've done that. I fell off. A, I fell from the top of a 15 foot wall. Oh, right into my back. Uh, okay. Oh man. That 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 was not fun. I, I was like a mile from the finish, but I got up and I finished. So it's it's. It's more of a team effort. It's more of a, I would say, don't do it with just your son. You really need a team of two or four. Well, four, four or six would be ideal. And if you get there and it's just the two of you, go find other people and, and try and join their team. Be a squad. Because it's a team thing. It's a squad. There are obstacles you simply can't climb by yourself, even with one other person. Because a 15 foot high wall i don't care how tall the other person is they can't boost you over that wall right <laughs> you you need like to build a pyramid of people that you then climb up and get over that wall and then Mercy the next team those, comes yeah. in and they yeah yeah she has well she does more mud runs my first my first mud run, my first um tough mudder was with you know max stokes like, I think he lost his MVP, but he's, he was an MVP. Yep. So, Mark Stokes, Ben Lee, who was at Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh, oh, I'm trying to remember the names without swearing. Uh, um, the Astronaut. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I know Himmelstein did Lee. one a couple of years back. Himmelstein's done a few. I think Himmelstein's going to do the one with me in, in Dallas this year. That's good. Um, Mary Mackey. Yeah. You know oh. Mary Mackey, yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Amory Mackey. So, so she was also in my team. Um, I'm trying to think who else. There was a bunch. Of, uh, we did basically a SharePoint Tough Mudder. There was a bunch. It was like six or seven of us. It was absolutely fabulous. That's impressive. And that was the first one I did. And I've done several others since with my karate crew and a bunch of others with other people. And it's just such fun. But there's the one that I love it. The thing I love about it is there's no judgment. If you decide, you know what? I really can't do that. You, you just walk past it. 
yeah. and move on. Go to the next one. Like you've still done that. You've still done the 18k. You just didn't do it through the mud and through the sludge and through the variety of obstacles. So no. If anyone wants to do it late September this year with me in Dallas, if you're going to get down here, feel free. I'll I'll bring you my team. How looks like he's up for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, okay. Sorry, we Sean, we, we, digress, we digress. the topic. Yeah, no. Was, I, I was just thinking. I was looking through, and Sean, I see your responses on a couple of these. Um, I like this one. Maybe you could talk through the the one you answered, where uh, Ketso was talking about uh, his CEOs on the E3 plan. Mm. Uh, we're running hybrid 365 hybrid solution. His mailbox is bigger than 50 gigabytes, and we have an archive policy of two years. He wants all of his older emails to a viable offline anytime, and when he searches for an old email, his outlook must not freeze. Boy, that boy, that's just uh, that's, that's a pretty asking. demanding situation. Yeah, <laughs> he does well, not want to use Outlook Web Access to access his email. Yeah, we talked through. I, I mean, I what I wrote there is, I'll stand by that. It's. You know, you set it up with an OST and you uh, build the cache on the client for the active mailbox. He's going to need a, probably an offline PST for the archive. Um, make sure you back that up some other way as well. Um, and he would want to look, you know, you've got that. Um, is it still uh, as much data as you can cram into the archive, Neil, for exchange? I believe so, but I'm not really a male person, so I I don't know. Okay. Well, I, could, I, I couldn't give you an authoritative answer on that. Gotcha. Well, for his use case, the the CEO is going to want a um, instant access to it, so that pretty much necessitates a, a local solution. Um, so the PST would make sense there. And, and it's going to be easy to back up. Outlook closed, make a copy, you're done. Yeah, exactly, Hal. So, but um, yeah, that's a that's a precarious solution. The CEO, I, I think I mentioned in there that the CEO might want to look at their data retention policies and things like that because anybody who keeps archived email forever obviously hasn't been <laughs> sued before <laughs> and has not had a legal hold run on their organization. Usually the legal departments get involved and that's the first sign that mail needs to go out the door on an interval. I just posted a link there about the unlimited archiving. Okay. So. Yeah. I figured that was still in place. But yeah, that's the that's the online solution. He was, doesn't want to do that. It's so kind of like uh, the the buffet, you know, eat all you want with the uh, the understanding that most people will eat a reasonable amount. And and uh, when not, when Microsoft not. figures out that people are eating too much, then they're going to change that policy. Exactly. Yeah. The yeah. Dilbert plan. Yeah. I'll post that link in as well. Everybody's watching. Um, no other questions. Anybody that's watching on the watch party, if you have any questions you'd like us to address. Feel free to type them in there in the comments, and and we'll uh, we'll try and tackle those. Um, so we're going to see if there's any other questions that came through today or over the weekend. Uh, 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 I don't see anything else. Yeah, a lot of times people will post a question, and um, and it requires follow-ups to be able to even begin to answer, to to try to understand a little bit more. Yeah, twenty yeah. questions. Right. Hey, Neil, <laughs> I'm gonna throw this at you, and you can throw it right back at me. Um, Microsoft Office Pro Plus going to Microsoft 365 apps 
the name change? Why on God's green earth did they do that? Not that Sean has an opinion. <laughs> you know, the I, I'm pained I, by the whole I, SharePoint I, I, story. Yeah, I don't. I I'm gonna have to answer. I don't know. Um, okay. I really don't have an answer for that one. I, I know we 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 moved most of the office applications into that kind of central app experience. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to drive most of it web-based versus like download client-based, but I don't have a specific answer as to why the name changed or why the the scenario changed. I really, really don't know. Um, All I can think is somebody in the office space. We can, we can, yeah, we can sync offline if you want, and we'll try and work it out, and then maybe we can present that back to the to, to the audience. But for a pure understanding perspective i really don't know okay it happened after i moved out of the uh, devices and experience group they are the office group so i didn't get any of kind of insights into that gotcha. uh, um and, I, and i'm saying this purely from a perspective as i'm saying i don't know because i genuinely don't know this isn't me being obtuse because i got you i know because what microsoft tells me i can't mm-hmm. i'm just being purely I, I don't i genuinely don't know no, it's totally fair, mm-hmm. and it's not really nice of me to throw it at you, but I figured I'd <laughs> try and ping you hey. as you are on the inside. I, I, I'll, I'll answer anything I can. Yeah. And I'll, answer, I'll try and answer anything I can, but, you know, there's obviously limitations. But that one, I genuinely don't know. Sure. I had a nice conversation with uh, Scott Stewart earlier last week. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. South African. My favorite South he's... African. Absolutely. Yeah. He was uh, giving me the lowdown on the um, page diagnostics tool and mm-hmm. uh, the work that he's doing for the uh, portal health, trying to roll all that up. So. Yeah, Sounds he's like done a, some good stuff there. I, I I love Scott. Scott and Nadine, Nadine's wife, they were mm-hmm. over at our house last year. We had, yeah. we, had, we had a real fun, real good blast. They came down, they flew down to Dallas. But they, no, Scott, Scott is um, the team he's in, very much focused on customer experiences and customer health and performance and capability. Yeah. So he is def, he is absolutely the right guy to talk to in that space. The tool that he PM'd, um, that whole diagnostics platform piece that he did, is pretty yeah. phenomenal, actually. Yeah. Um, it's a shame, I think, and and f- if I'm wrong here, please correct me, but I don't think they've released an Edge version of it yet. It no, they haven't. It exists for Chrome. Chrome. Yeah, it's a Chrome extension, Chrome. which is the irony. Right. So, wow. but given the... <laughs> The new Edge platform is an Edge, is a Chrome Chromium browser. Yep. Yes. Chromium. But somebody has wrapped tried in, wrapped in Edge. Someone has tried that. I think we'll get that. It does work. It yeah, does. I think. I think. Chromium. Yeah. I, most most I'm, I'm Chrome sure it, work it, in Edge. Certainly. The new Edge. Yeah. Yeah. The new Edge is pretty cool. Um, It's a bit but of yeah. a memory hog, if I'm being honest, but it's it, it, well, yeah. it it's a pretty cool browser wrapper. But that um, no, so no, from cool. I've been preaching his um, his sermon, doing uh, mm-hmm. what I can to get the word out for quite some time. Yeah, uh, it's best tool to try and troubleshoot any performance issues and. Uh, yeah, it should, it should, it should absolutely at least at least be your first thing you try. And yeah. if you if if you can't diagnose it with that, then go open a support case. But Have we talked first. about that before, Sean? In one of these sessions, I can't remember. I know we we've talked about it, we but did uh, a bit. But yeah, you know, it's it's being the tool was nice to have a while back. A few a few years back, uh, Scott and I co-presented at uh, 
um, SPC. And that was the year that he revealed the tool at the session that we co-presented. And unfortunately, the demo bombed. So it was an authentic <laughs> demo, of course. Um, but um, he didn't sacrifice the demo gods. <laughs> no, he didn't. We didn't uh, light the candle and sacrifice the chicken. But um, anyway, the at that point, it was only working with uh, classic pages. And of course, the tool now works with publishing pages, classic pages. Um, and Scott's tune now is he's trying to get everybody onto CDNs to drive performance. Um, most people are not taking advantage of CDNs in their tenant. And it's easy enough with one line of PowerShell. Um, he said he's going to write a blog. He's going to write an article on Microsoft. Hey, I said, tell I, me about it. I'll do it myself. I'll post it, blog post. What are you yeah, going to say, Neil? I have a challenge with CDN. I have a challenge with CDNs. Because CDNs, my challenge with CDNs and my, my issue here, and this is purely a personal thing, is host things on CDNs that are not security restricted. You can only really host things that are like Public. available to everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I get it. I understand it. But, but imagine this scenario. Imagine okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go wild now. Imagine this. Okay. Let's say let's say we had a situation where we could have a fully replicated Cosmo DB based SharePoint platform, mm -hmm. global, right? Running with um, consistency levels at full maturity. So Cosmo DB. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Cosmo DB, but replicating within seconds across the globe okay. across multiple instances and gel acquires full a singing security full security model the same as sharepoint does today okay and not being cdm based but actually having replication global sharepoint replicated mm. as we all know we've never had that I know Metalogics had a product that would do something behind the scenes and would do something along those lines, and it worked exceptionally well for the people still, that used they it. They still sell a lot then, of it. Yep. Yeah. Right. And, and for that market, it works well. It, it's questionable on supportability. That's not, a, not, a, not any way a demeanor on... A quest now, right? It's not methodology, it's a quest on it, but that product works well in the market that it works. Mm -hmm. but what I'm saying is, imagine if we could do away with CDNs and have a more replicated database infrastructure that had all of the database security behind it instead of needing to use like niche solutions. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that means that that's a huge change to the SharePoint product. And it's a huge change to the SharePoint product on premises, even online, which is where we would be looking to implement this. And I'm not saying, I'm not alluding to this as being somewhere they should go or may be going or even anything I've e even heard of. Yeah. But for me, that would be more of a, more of an appropriate solution. Database rep Application is 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 not easy in SharePoint. It really, really isn't. We all know. We're all SharePoint people. We understand the level of like transactional work that's going on inside SharePoint. Not just from a user interaction, but sure. timer jobs and all kinds of other stuff that's going on. Oh yeah. So it's it's not easy. It's a living but I thing. I feel right. I feel there's a lot that could be done. Assuming SharePoint main maintain its on-premises basis or even cloud basis in IaaS even. There's a ton mm -hmm. of stuff that could be done to make it a much more, I'm going to say it, comfortable solution to work with. But it's a, yeah. it's a huge investment on the SharePoint team. It really it would, would be. be. 
Yeah, I know. And, and their driver is obviously SharePoint Online. So I, ju I just, I would love if, I would almost, imagine, imagine, um, okay, so let me, <laughs> let me say it this way. Imagine this scenario. Cloud didn't exist. There is no IaaS. There is no Azure, I, uh, AWS. G it's just someone else's server anyway. It just doesn't exist. Right. So here's me. I'm the, I'm the US arm, and I want to replicate my solution around the globe. Imagine building a solution for that for a moment. Mm -hmm. The technical complexity, but then also think about the technology we have today in terms of being able to do that. Right. I think we have it. I genuinely think we have it. I do too. I just, I just think we don't have the, we don't have the investment from the leadership to make it happen. And that's not a bad thing, right? Where I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. I'm saying that, you know, that's where they are and that's, we want to go SharePoint online. We want to go this and the other because SharePoint online has that functionality. I just, I'm a geek at heart. I'm a true <laughs> geek at heart. So I, I would love to be able to play with that and just see how we can make that work. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think that you're right. I think could it be done? Yeah, does uh, and and somebody high up would likely say, yeah, well that <clears throat> helps. help us uh, sell net new seats. Mm -hmm. You know, licensing. Mm -hmm. No, you know, to, to go back and you know sometimes into. To, to finesse and create a better product in some areas where it just it's not going to get the return for for doing that. There are some solid third party solutions that that help them do it, and that's sometimes yeah. good. Yeah. Let's just drop the distributed cache and get a Redis cache. <laughs> oh God! Please, yes, please. <laughs> hey, the last yeah. I've been I've been so. It's, as a migration engineer for Office 365, I've been working with Linux and Redis uh -huh. and a whole bunch of other Docker-based open source platforms oh, yeah. for the last 12 months before I moved to this role. Uh, it was like, it opened my eyes to a I ton imagine. of stuff that could be done. You know, and it's accessible cache, to the .NET MongoDB, space. Right. Redis Cache, MongoDB, Nginx web servers, the yep. whole gamma of like, I'm like, I'm right there uh, with. You. Maybe SharePoint should have been this five years ago. Yeah, I, I'm like, yeah. Trevor Seward and I have had talks about that. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. uh, Trevor at one point was actually petitioning Bill, Bill Bear, uh, mm -hmm. to swap the. Uh, Distribute a cash out, get it off of um, the current platform, which is shaky as hell, and get over on the rest. <coughs> the easiest thing would have been to not have had it at all. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Point. I mean, we, we didn't need it before SharePoint 2016. Then, okay, you hit a different server. You, you have to re-authenticate. Okay. Okay, that's, then that's fine, right? A little irritating, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, eh, just fix your load balancer. You'd be okay. Yeah. I agree. Do we go too far down the it's, rabbit hole? Just, uh, well, yeah, we, there, there's... We, uh, well, we, we, we probably did. Pro probably did, but then again, uh, you know, we, we've not had any, uh, any other questions posted it's been uh, kind of a quiet afternoon um one thing i was there there was uh, so i'm just looking to see if there are any uh, we've got a handful of people still watching on the one live stream on the second location i don't see any questions either um there's a couple interesting questions that are out there um one uh, it's a bit lighter weight than what we've been discussing here but uh, <laughs> back into it over on the teams community um, somebody explain how to best view the written chat whilst I'm presenting in the team's meeting. 
Uh, and then uh, the person asks, uh, if it helps, I'm teaching and using a smallish laptop, so no second screen available. I've tried splitting the screen and having Teams in the app on one side and then the browser on the other, but it feels very cluttered. Is this the best option? And and obviously we have the, to, to respond to that, let everybody, if you've got any other thoughts on this. I mean, one, I'm, I, again, clarifying question because you just go down to the bottom, uh, float over the controls, click on the chat, and it should just pop open on the right side. So there's yeah. having two separate instances open. I don't understand what the, you know, how this this is harder. If you didn't realize that you can open the chat within your meeting on the on the right side, um, right. and and what is forthcoming, and I don't know the time frame for it, uh, but is to be able to pop out the chat. So mm-hmm. you could then size that based on uh, your need as well. Um, so, and you could, if with that popped out in two windows, you could actually use the uh, the windows and arrow key to snap them onto your window and then drag and drop the center bar and give your, if you suddenly see a huge influx and in responses via text, you can widen that just with one control. You're not having to manage two different windows. But uh, like I said, that, you I mean, that, that, that feature is forthcoming. I'm sure we can ask Neil, and he won't know either. But it's uh, it's one of those that's mm. supposed to be here. I know. They say summer, you know. Coming. Coming. Yeah, it's coming. It's in the mail. It's in 2020. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. I think there's a few other questions that we'll have to get you know, a bit more uh, lengthy. Um, always a bunch of questions around uh, PowerShell. That oh, makes yeah. great video discussions. What PowerShell questions are there? Um, I just see some of the responses here. Um, it's pretty far down the page on the Teams community. Okay. Yeah, but, it's been yeah. a my, lot of my, my time Facebook in PowerShell. Feed, by the way, is like, like three or four minutes behind everything else. Yep. Yeah. And uh, see, I don't know any anything else. Hal, anything else that you've seen that you want to discuss in our last our, our last couple minutes? Um, one just just a little note from uh, the earlier meeting today. I did poke into the chat. The uh, setup instructions for how to make an Outlook.com account have a custom domain name. So, uh, oh yeah, maybe you can explain that again. Just to expand on that a bit. Bob, expand on it, Bob, that really didn't, uh, the, the thing of it is, is there is there is a way to go about doing that. There is a very nice article on it, and, uh, oh, heaven's sakes, let me see if I can find that. Um, there were some issues with that. Some folks have had some problems, but uh, that's where this, this little article came up from. There was a, a couple of conflicting Articles on the subject, and let's see here. Actually, there's a better way of going about that. There it is. Nothing wrong with a better yeah, way. We can share that again since we've got these as two separate meetings. Okay. Let me, uh, it's in the I'll notes for back this in over here. And. Voila. There you got it. There it is. <laughs> Sadly, it's the big old long ugly Microsoft link, but that's it. It, it works. Yeah, I see it. Yep. So that was the question about uh, um, creating an email. Or, you know, what was the what was the question again that you were answering? It was a custom domain with an oh, Outlook, yeah. uh, Outlook.com account. Mapping a custom domain on top of it. <clears throat> account. Yep. Yeah, it's personalized email address, if you will. Yep. So you don't have to go to default. Cool. Very cool. Good stuff. Well, gentlemen, we are we are at the hour. 
So want <laughs> to, uh, again, thank you guys for, for participating and thanks for folks that watched in. Of course, um, if you're wondering, what do we do with these recordings? So over the next uh, day, day and a half, I should compile both the morning and evening recordings uh, posted out to YouTube. I also then over at buckleyplanet.com and you can see it with a distinctive artwork there for the office hours. But I go through and provide a blog post that has a timestamp uh, list of all the topics that we cover in both uh, uh, sessions. So yeah, you that's can, a fantastic job at it. So you can jump Indeed. to the specific uh, topic, the, the issue that we're covering and uh, share that out there. So, um, you know, feel free to uh, continue posting questions here. We do monitor. We go back and look at uh, any new questions that are asked and we try to handle those, uh, you know, and this is our this is our 11th week, gentlemen, of doing this. So uh, we'll come back for uh, week 12. And now we're all teams. We're on yeah, teams. Buddy. We're live streaming. So. Um, yeah, stuck with add, a Christian and it paid off. And add some other services. And I uh, and actually I followed that 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 link. I'm trying to uh, expedite getting added to the LinkedIn live. So hopefully, hopefully, we will in short order be able to simulcast live stream to Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. That's the goal. Sweet. And we'll be wow. everywhere. So. Be cool. All right, guys. Have a good evening, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk to you uh, next week. Same bat time, same bat channels. We'll be back uh, every Monday at eight a.m. Oh, and six p.m. Pacific. Huh? Enjoy the rest of the week, gentlemen. Oh, oh yeah, there's some Absolutely. work that has to happen in between. Yeah, yeah mm. work and life. I, thanks, guys. Good night. Yeah. Take care, Neil. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care, Neil. Talk to you later. Yeah. Bye. See you next week.